In this video, we're going to derive the differential equation that applies to the RLC series circuit, which I've drawn here. I've chosen to use I of t as our unknown function for the differential equation. I think this is the best choice because in an RLC series circuit, all of the elements will have the same current, whereas they will each have different voltages. So if you want a single function that would best represent this circuit, it's gonna be the current through there. However, you may be given problems that'll ask you for a voltage on one of the elements here. We'll talk about how to handle that later, but for now, we're gonna derive the equation using Kirchhoff's voltage law for the current through the circuit. So we're gonna go ahead and, and do our loop here using Kirchhoff's voltage law. First thing we see is we're coming in the negative side of the voltage source, so we'd have negative Vs of t. Then we're going to have a voltage drop across the resistor and by Ohm's law that's going to be R times I of T. Then we have a little bit of an issue here. We have a voltage drop across the capacitor. However, we can't say that that's in terms of the current right now. It's not like C times the current because Ohm's law only works for resistors. So instead, well, for at least now, just write it as plus Vc of t. We'll figure out how to relate that back to I of t later. Similarly, we have a voltage across the inductor that we can't say what it is yet. And we will go ahead and write that here. And this gives us our base Kirchhoff's voltage law for this circuit. Now, let me remind you something about a inductor here. We know that if you have a current and a voltage through an inductor, they are related. And they are related in that the voltage is L times the derivative of the current through the inductor. So what I can do then is I can replace this voltage across the inductor with L times the derivative of the current, and the current through the inductor is the same as I of t here. So by replacing that term, I would have L times di dt. So now I've got two of those terms in, uh, in as a function of I of t. The last thing we need is the voltage there across the capacitor turn that into I. So we remind ourselves what is the relationship on a capacitor between the voltage and the current. Well, in this case, the current is the capacitance value times the derivative of the voltage. The problem is I don't have the derivative of the voltage in my equation right now, but I need it to replace it with the current. So I'm going to take my whole equation here and take derivatives of both sides. Well, then I would have the derivative of the source voltage. I'd have R times the derivative of the current plus the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor. And then I already had derivatives. So the derivative again is going to be the second derivative of the current. And at this point in time, if you solve for dv c dt, it's, it's 1 over c times ic. So we can go ahead and replace that there. So that's going to be 1 over c times i of t. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and move the source to the right hand side. It's the one term that will never be written as a function of I of t. And then I'll rearrange the terms on the left side and I'm also going to switch into the prime notation. So I'd have L i double prime plus R i prime plus 1 over C times I equals dVs dt. And then we usually prefer to have a leading coefficient of one, so I'll divide everything by L, and we get I double prime 
plus R over L I prime plus one over C L C I is one over L D V S D T. And so this right here is your standard differential equation for an RLC series circuit when you're trying to find the current through it. And in particular, at least for now, the only voltage sources we're gonna use are DC sources. If they are DC, that means they are constant value. So the derivative would be zero here. And so your simplified problem would just be equal to zero. And really when you're trying to solve one of these circuits, instead of having to do all the hard work of KVL yourself, I think it's best just to go straight to using these formulas here, write out your differential equation and solve it from there. Now I mentioned earlier that sometimes they will ask you for something other than the current through these. Maybe they ask you for the voltage, for example. Well, if they ask you for the voltage across the resistor, you can just multiply by R, that would get you the voltage there. If they ask you for the voltage across the inductor, well, you could take the derivative of it and multiply it by L. And if they ask you the voltage across the capacitor, you have to integrate it and uh, divide by C. So really, you could do any of those things to find the voltages. However, there's a fact I can tell you right now that because of the, the nature of the solutions we're dealing with, your equation for any other variable in an RLC series circuit is always gonna be the same left-hand side but you might just have some sort of a constant on the right side. So if you're asked to find any variable in an RLC series circuit, whether it's the current through everything or any of the other voltages, you can just go ahead and start with, you know, X double prime plus R over L X prime plus one over L C X. You'll find the homogeneous solution. And then because of that constant there, you have to worry about the particular solution. And that's all you have to do to get the answer.